everybody. So in this video on Knuckle Busters Garage, today what we're going to end up doing is eventually working on these Mustang fenders. Because the headlight buckets don't exactly match up with the aftermarket fenders and that's a problem. First things first, I gotta clean this hell hole. Gotta move the welder, the saw, the drywall, and for some odd reason, 20 bar stools and tables. So let's get to it. Montage starts now! Yeah, this thing definitely needs more loving. But one of these days, I'm gonna get there. So, there's a bunch of like dirt and stuff in here, like metal shavings and whatnot. I'm gonna pull out that new shop vac I got from Lowe's, and I'm gonna see how much work it actually does, how good it uh, actually works. But if you guys notice, the dash is white now. We actually painted the dash because we're going to be doing like a white and black interior, considering the color of the car going to resemble that white and blue Shelby Mustang right there but we're gonna use these colors on this one that was rebuilt you know we're gonna do the colors like this reversed so we're going to have all white car and then blue racing stripes over the whole deal here and then we have 20 inch loose wheels for the rear and we're probably gonna do 17s in the front so it gives it a nice rig but I'll talk a little bit more about this tomorrow. Right now I'm gonna go inside, eat, and work on some models. So see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so here we go with day two on this. More shop stuff. I'm kind of excited for this video because now I'm finally gonna be working in the shop. You know, after all winter of doing absolutely nothing, it was extremely difficult to find stuff to film, find stuff to do. So that's why I started doing more vlog stuff. But now that it's starting to get a little warmer out, which yesterday was warm. Today's, oh, today's absolutely horrible. Which is why I had the heater on for like four plus hours. Now it's nice and warm in here. But first things first, today, I'm gonna vacuum this out. Get it all nice and clean. Test the shop back to see how good it actually is. How good it's uh, sucking capabilities are. But first I gotta pull the seat out so I can you know, get around in there because it's still kind of tight quarters in here. So. I guess I'll do that first. So, first thing you're gonna need when you pull the seats out, a screwdriver. Preferably a flat blade because there's gonna be these little plastic caps underneath that you're gonna have to be able to pry off. Next thing you're gonna need, three quarter inch ratchet. Next, you're gonna probably wanna use a half inch deep well socket, as well as a pretty decent sized extension. Now with all these, you can get the job done. So here we go, as soon as you crawl under here, now you're gonna have a hole here, you're gonna have one of the holes here and then back right over there and one right there. Now that's where I told you to grab the flat blade screwdriver so you can just basically pry off the little rubber caps, pull it off and then kind of bring it around like it's a bike inner tube or something under those similar lines. There's gonna be four of those, so you're gonna to wanna to baggy those to label them because I already lost them. I have no idea where they are, but I'm sure I'll find them. Now after this, this is when you're going to want to grab that ratchet and the extension and socket and put it all together and start cranking these bolts off. Now there's only four bolts, so it shouldn't take that long to do this job. So now your seat should be able to come right out. So last time you guys saw this, I was cutting the pieces apart, cutting out floorboards, grinding, and everything. Uh, so we finally got everything all welded in, and you know, I got one of the seatbelt things still in here for some reason. I just put it back, but um, there used to be a huge hole here. Now there's solid metal, so first thing what we did was we cut this out, got this all cut it out, cut out everything up here. Um, not really good lighting, you guys can't really see that, but, um, and then basically what we did was that I wasn't able to run really nice beads because the metal was so thin it wanted to just heat up and melt right away and it wasn't working with the old sheet metal on the car just because it was so thin. So I ended up making these brackets just by bending uh, sheet metal. So I was able to make these and then once I got those in, all I did was do these little stitches all the way down. So I did the stitches all the way around the entire uh, full board piece here where metal was able to be contacted. And then for the seat platforms, I did the same thing all up to the side here. And as you guys can see, all down the front here. 
So I was able to get all that in, all up right there, which this actually looked really nice. And I got one more up here that was still uh, put together. And there's a little patch panel right there. You guys probably can't see that, but it doesn't really matter. And now if we come, now if we come to the driver's side, you can see where I replaced a ton of panels. I had to go all the way up to the firewall up here because the guy before us had just put a random piece of metal in there and it wasn't holding very well. So reshaped our own out of the, uh, so we reshaped our own out of the platform that we had and then re-welded it all back in here, cut out pieces of sheet metal, made brackets and stitch welded all of it back in here. I can't tell you how many times I set this car on fire with this, but now we're all good to go. Floorboards are in. Dash is painted. Now I just got to clean the interior and pull the fenders off. Here's where I get to test the shot back. There's a little before shot. And after. Not that many complaints. A lot of this stuff is just because it's dirty, it kind of needs to be washed. But. All the little fragments and stuff actually came up pretty nice, I think. So, out of 10, I rate this probably about a 7. Not, I mean, it's kind of low, it's not perfect, but perfect would be like a power wash kind of deal here. But, at first, it didn't really want to like work, but now that it's, you know, kind of broken in, I guess, it started working a whole lot better. Um, so yeah, interior's done. So on the Mustang, we decided we're gonna go ahead and order the Dynacorn fenders because we believe that it's gonna fit a lot better than uh, the replacement fenders we have now since they're kind of janky. Janky. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So this is probably gonna be the end of this video. Yay. I apologize for how boring this is, boring. but at least now you know how to take out uh, Mustang seats. seats. Carefully. Very carefully. Anyway, if you guys like this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs give up, and I'll like. see you in the next one. Thumbs up, baby. <laughs>